Come back any time. Since my last Resident Evil video is doing so well, I had a very original idea. Why not make another one? You guys seem to like it, so I'm going to kick the can a little bit further down the road and see what happens. As the title suggests, this video will explore the best ways to play Resident Evil 4 on PC. For obvious reasons, I won't cover the older versions again since we have established that they suck. Okay, that's an exaggeration, but I'm not lying when I say there are better ways to play. We've got the Wii version, which can be emulated on Dolphin, the PS3 version, which can be emulated on RPCS3, and finally, we have the Steam version. I know about the 360 version, but I don't know where to find it. It's not available online, and I've been looking everywhere. Nevertheless, this is going to be a good show. As soon as I started playing the Wii version on Dolphin, I noticed something immediately. It was this ugly line at the bottom of my screen. It happens in the menus, but also when opening the inventory. And often when I closed the inventory, the line remained. To fix, simply go into Graphics, go to the Advanced tab and enable the Crop feature. This will hide the line from view, but it will also get rid of those unsightly letterboxes on the sides of the screen. Next, go to the game's properties and turn off XFB copies to texture only. This will eliminate other visual bugs that may plague the game. As for controls, gamepads are perfectly fine. However, keyboard and mouse is far better for aiming, especially when you consider the size of the reticule, so using a mouse is practically a cheat code. I did some digging and discovered that there is a texture pack for the Wii version. And it's not just any old texture pack, it's actually derived from the HD project. Yes, the very same one that was made for the Steam version. And it clocks in at just over 8 gigabytes. So let's have a look at the texture pack's visuals and performance. I'll show comparisons for your convenience. So yeah, it's a very nice upgrade, but there is one minor issue. Anytime you load a new area, the custom textures take a second to load in. That's a limitation of the emulator, and there's nothing that can be done about it. But personally, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Before moving on, I should mention that the wiki page raises two possible problems when upscaling the game. Firstly, the blur effect becomes weaker, which hardly matters really. However, the broken water texture is potentially more serious. Despite playing the game for several hours though, I couldn't replicate this water glitch at all, so it's either hardware dependent or it's been resolved. As for the PS3 version, there's actually not much to tell. I should start out by saying RPCS3 doesn't support texture packs yet, so you can only play it stock standard. The main advantage of running Resident Evil on RPCS3 is the ease of setting it up. There's not much to change, except maybe the resolution and V-Sync. There aren't any custom patches either, so forget about raising the frame rate above 30 or increasing the field of view. Like I said, it's stock standard. Out of curiosity, I tested this on my very old PC and can affirm that it runs Resident Evil 4 without frame dips, as long as I stuck to 1080p resolution. Controlling with a keyboard and mouse is possible, but requires that you tweak the dead zones and mouse acceleration, so if you would rather want a plug and play experience, stick to a gamepad. Finally, we can have a look at the Steam version. I will just say from the get-go that it is in many ways the superior version. Of course, graphically, it's very similar to the PS3 release, but on PC, there's a lot of community content that enhances it even further. 
foremost is the HD project, which is apparently superior to the one for Dolphin, but we'll do comparisons later to find out for ourselves. This is a mighty download though, so it's best to use one of the torrent links. Included with the HD project is RE4 Tweaks. It can be downloaded separately, but there's really no need in this case. It offers many comprehensive enhancements that help to modernize the gameplay. Once we have the game running, I'll explain how to use it. First off, we'll have to run the game at least once, just to create configuration files. I don't know if it's necessary, but it's always a good habit. After that, we can proceed to install the HD project. It's relatively straightforward, since it's been tailored to the Steam version. But remember, it's a beast of a mod, so it will take a while to install. You definitely want to download RE4 Tweaks, so allow it. As a bonus, RE4 Tweaks will patch the game's executable for you. You should click on Yes, since the patch will drastically improve performance. Once the game is started, access RE4 Tweaks by pressing F1 on the keyboard. You'll see a whole slew of options to tweak. For example, you can change the FOV, switch over to the Vulkan renderer, or even change a few cosmetics within the game. For me, the controls definitely felt a lot smoother with RE4 tweaks, but the best quality of life improvement is being able to reload without having to aim. You save at least a second in the process, and this could be helpful when hordes of enemies swarm on you. The sniper rifle has been greatly enhanced as well, thanks to a better scope and a more tactile feel. It's just much easier to aim than before. It's easy to miss, but RE4 Tweaks has a hidden tool menu that includes a save function. However, activating this requires going to the miscellaneous tab and enabling the debug menu. After saving, you have to exit the game and then run it again. By pressing Ctrl and F3 on your keyboard, you will be able to access the tool menu. And from there, you can save your game anywhere without needing typewriters. 99% of the time I played with keyboard and mouse. But when I was on the lake fighting the giant salamander, mouse aim was terrible for some reason, and I died at least three times. For that instance, I had no choice but to use a controller. Okay, so let's just do a quick comparison between the HD project on Dolphin and Steam. Let's see if there are major differences. After all that, you should already have a favourite. But in my opinion, the PS3 version doesn't quite cut the mustard, despite being a really solid port. You would be silly to play with normal graphics when the texture packs are so good. So it comes down to the enhanced Wii version on Dolphin and the modded game on Steam. I should remind you that Dolphin has a quick save feature and it's arguably more convenient than having to navigate a menu. And while its texture mod is clearly not as impressive, it is much smaller in size. This might be crucial for people with limited space. At 37 gigabytes, the HD project is extremely large, but if bandwidth and space is not an issue for you, the modded Steam version will be the obvious choice. I think when coupled with RE4 tweaks, the mod is truly spectacular and breathes new life into the original game. If you got this far, would you please consider giving a like? It really helps with the algorithm. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.